Hunter x Hunter, episode 37, return to Whale Island. No more letters from gone. Gone. Whoa. And without a letter, it's especially amazing and surprising. Yeah, I'm just back now. I have all my limbs. Who would have thought? He's grown, right? He's he's grown, for sure. Why the long face? I heard about you in our letters from Gon. <laughs> Oh, Jing X and X Gon. Tell me more about my father. He hasn't mentioned his father in a while. I feel like he's found other things, like Nen. Lu is like, where's your torture room? You're saying we can just walk in the door? I don't care how powerful your Nen is. <laughs> Older sister powers will destroy you. Wow, she really knows how to handle Gon. Hilarious and like real how all powerful Gon, Gon is somewhat terrified of her. It's funny, like after the whole hotel arc, he was living VIP, but home is home. You could have let him know. They really set him up for that. Don't do this to me. Please put it somewhere safe, for the love of God. <laughs> Don't do that! Do you, she doesn't know what we went through to get that. What is this feeling? <laughs> this feeling of normal, normalcy in a family. I'm glad he's, he seems happy for Gon, though. <laughs> Why is that so great? We'll just kill a large animal and feast on its carcass. Oh, this is so sweet. That's so nice. I feel like it's in me. Like, my fear of things going wrong for them is just in my heart. I'm afraid to open up and just love it. Love their friendship. Because it's so beautiful. The more I watch, the more I just love Kalua. You can imagine, potentially, some negative feelings creeping up. Some jealousy about Gon's beautiful home life. But it's just playtime. You know, Kalua's happy to be here with Gon. In real life, I feel like Mido actually would be great for Kalua. Again, this is all me. My later high school years were very difficult. Around that time, and probably no coincidence, I ended up becoming very close with someone who's now, I mean, he's like a brother to me. And I ended up spending a lot of time, um, like all weekends, at his family's house. And his family was really warm and welcoming and just like a good place for me. And others, I should mention. But come to think of it, there was no resentment at all. It was like an oasis. Sometimes as a kid, you don't even realize what you're doing to save yourself. But looking back, you imagine that some of those things were no accident. You ended up in the places where there was an abundance of the thing you so sorely lacked. And then there'll be like some underlying connective force that makes it all feasible, which is like just your goodness. And that's Kalua and Gon. It'd be hilarious if they cut the same thing again. They were not lying. They did indeed catch something in the forest to eat. Look at all this food. Just gathering. Why was there an Eevee in there? <laughs> he didn't come to visit Mido, he came to visit Whale Island. Literally. <laughs> they're, they're full. They're well fed. They had the whole forest <laughs> to feast on. All those animals just walking into their deaths. What does this remind me of? This is like the... This is Full Metal Alchemist. There it is. Isn't it obvious? Duh. Fair. It would be unfair to Kalua. Maybe. It depends. It could be unfair to Kalua if his new life purpose is like Gon's growth. Him going along with Gon, I think, is the best thing ever. I don't want anything else. But it would be great if there was some other hook in there for him that he could do in tandem. Oh, that's not so familiar. I doubt that, though. Hey, good enough. Okay, here it is, but in a very nice, healthy way. I, I felt it was, there was something there. No doubt. Ew, girls. Here's that common ground. No doubt. 
これからも一緒にいようよ。Of course. 本当恥ずいこと平気で言うよな。Does Gon feel embarrassed about anything ever? No, he does not. 悪くないな。I'm pumped. よし。Personally. やりたいことが見つかるまで、お前の親父探しに付き合ってやるか。うん。I am Kalua and Kalua is me. I too, as a grown adult, am still looking for what I'm doing. <laughs> But like, that's fine. I increasingly come to terms with that and embrace it. Gon and Kalua might appear different in their approaches. Gon has this very specific thing he's aiming for. Kalua is struggling to articulate it. But they're not really that different. Speaking of games within games that comes up all the time in this show, there's like the biggest game that's very, very hard to pin down and articulate, which is just your life, your adventure, your, your culmination into something that you could be, which I think is something like given your potential and given what you are, how do you get as close as you can to bridging That gap. And what's cool and beautiful about it is that there are multiple iterations of it. Like I was saying with Zushi, it's not necessarily what he's articulating as his goal that will be his goal, or that's, that is to say, there are maybe even infinite iterations. Of his life that will maximize his potential even if they look different materially. There's an alignment and a, and a feeling that comes with it. And oftentimes, the things that have given me the greatest feelings of satisfaction and like right place, right time, right energy were totally unexpected and different from what I, I thought I wanted or thought I was going towards. Like, there are plenty of people who know exactly what they want to do and tap into it. And that's really wonderful. That's a gift. I'm not sure that's the whole story, though. Taking Gon, even his goal, his stated aim of finding his father, is a face, literally, he's putting on just that push for potential. I assume he's going to find his father, and that push will have been great. For getting him to be better, making him grow to that point, and then he's gonna have to reinvent what he's going for because in that time his potential also will have risen with his ability. Kalua is saying he doesn't know what he wants to focus on or what he wants to do with his life. But you cannot say the guy is not growing. I mean, we've seen massive growth in him just from following his instincts, following what feels right, and crucially, and I would say very significantly, away from the things he really hates. When he said, there are a lot of things I don't want to do, that's me. Like, that's a lot of how I've gotten some of the things I'm, I'm most grateful for in my life is just being really clear that I don't like this thing. I don't want my life to have this thing I'm experiencing now or be like this the way it is now or the way I'm imagining it out into the future at this rate. So, like, what do I have to focus on? What do I have to deviate towards that will give me the tools and the, the power and that feeling? Of freedom, so I can get over that hurdle. I would say that quite often those signs or that gravity comes from other people. Attaching yourself to someone's slipstream who has something you see as potential for yourself can be really wonderful and is especially great if that's happening in tandem. And that's often the case for really good friendships where both people are creating a multiplier effect on each other because of their, their various gifts and skills and deficiencies and what have you. Like since the Avatar days, I've been saying this, and I'm such a firm believer in the fact that you can't really get it wrong if you're pursuing something that's big, if you are really thinking and listening and understanding. And you're, that you can play an active role in your own life and dreams. You're iterating, you're trying, following the things that feel right and avoiding the things that feel wrong. I think it only goes wrong when, I don't know, maybe it's fear or a lack of the dedication to really like look, imagine, etc. So that there are all these signals and instincts flying around, but none of them are really being capitalized on. There's no motion, there's no endeavor, there's no striving, etc., etc. Clue is someone I look at and I hear saying, I'm not really sure what I want, and I have total faith that either he'll find it or without finding it, he's going to reach his potential. Tiny but significant point of Evidence, the fact that he can tell Gon he's jealous with a smile on his face says everything. Uh oh. Miro is a really unsung hero in this story. Yeah, the, her instincts were correct. But. That's interesting. I get it. Wow. <laughs> She's great. Oh, and she's listening. <laughs> Miro's such a like tear jerking character. It's always so. I don't know. She's great. Her love is just so pure. And you really get the sense. You imagine that that's a cornerstone of what Gon turned out to be. Really put up, pushed him ahead. Yeah, I thought so. She knew. And Miro-san, the, the unsung hero, I don't think it should be understated. What a act of faith it is telling him the truth. She knows or knew better than Gon did the dangers of the world, as, you know, parents do. To send someone into that, someone you've raised, is... 
tough. You imagine the instinct is, what if I just keep them here, you know, keep them here forever? Then I can be assured of their safety. But there's a potential tragedy in that because to shield people from the world, I mean, that's part of the adventure. Like the adventure, your destiny is where you meet the world, where your natural ability and what you are and your curiosities and interests and beliefs meet reality. You're a block of wood, but inside of that block of wood, there's the potential for you to have a really powerful, interesting, unique shape. And the world is the woodcutter. The individual needs to work on building their shape and choosing where to go to get like the best cuts, but it's the world that cuts. It's the air blowing on you that whittles you down that makes you aerodynamic. It's both in tandem. That I think is a big part of the thrill of life. Oh, this looks like a clue. Jing knew too. My god. Looks just like him. Maybe he didn't know either fully, or maybe he did. Oh, God, that just gives her even more credibility. She knows the full tragedy of the real world firsthand. Alright, so we don't really know about the mom then, do we? This is gonna be a, a thing later. <laughs> His mom's gonna appear. She's really mad at Jing, but part of it is because she loves him so much. That says it all, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> She's not getting rid of it. Well, let's open the box. Watch the box be empty, that'd be a hilarious joke. Headstrong, had a death wish, could not be told what to do, killed large animals. No friends. Man, Emil's getting roasted. That's great and humiliating. Mito's grown now, but she's still that child chasing after Jing. She still feels it potently. <laughs> and you get the feeling like this is her favorite part of the whole thing, because she has his attention. What's in the box? <laughs> Man, I would not be listening. I would be opening the box. Is it just a just a box? Does it open? Okay, that's why. I feel like Lua can figure it out. Of course, of course he could. It's not about the, the destination. It was about the box the whole time. And the boxes we made along the way. That was fast. Nen. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It's just a cup filled with ice. Oh great, it's another puzzle. <laughs> Maybe you have to use like every kind of Nen to get it open. One after another. Oh, it actually, that actually was it. You gotta use Nen to hear it? Yo. Oh. Yo. Okay. Yes, how do they know all this? Right. He's way too far ahead for comfort. Get out of my head. You know too much. I don't like it when I feel transparent. Hunter Cyclopedia! Hey! Mito-san is the best. Yeah! 
unsung hero of the show. Funny to compare her with Jing too and the different energies. She's all worried about going and don't go out into the world. Don't become a hunter. It's dangerous. Jing's like, yeah, you were going to become a hunter. From day one, you only are worthy of finding me if you become a hunter. I think it takes both. It's a good combo. If anything, Gon could use a little, a little bit more of of the Mito energy, being concerned for his own well-being. This is one of those peacetime episodes that ends up being really riveting and just ends up doing so much. Really raises the bar for Jing. So much anticipation for him. A lot of characterization for Mito. Great talk from Klu and Gon, kind of centering their their aims, creating both some interesting contrasts between their outlooks, but also I, I, what I feel are at heart some real similarities, as is often the case with them. Both compelling and, and super heartwarming. Just, I don't know, seeing the two of them together, playing around on the island, having heart to heart. Klu's side of the conversation especially resonant with me. As I mentioned, the latter half of my high school career was quite difficult. When I was 16 or 17, in sort of a, a desperate attempt to address some of the concerns she had for me, my mother sent me to this spiritual retreat thinking it would help me get my head on straight. And the, the head of the spiritual retreat was like this guru, they call it, which to this day is a fascinating topic to me, but sort of not relevant here. Suffice it to say, she was really, really powerful presence and very intelligent, really in tune with people and their nature and human psychology, etc. And one of the, the benefits of this retreat was that uh, it was a youth retreat and everyone attending could get like personal time, personal counseling time or whatever. It was my turn and she asked me, you know, what was on my mind and I just like dumped this this whole host of issues and fears and concerns and problems and desperation about like my lot in life and where I was going, where I was headed, what the purpose of life was, etc. And she listened without saying anything really. And then I kind of wore myself out <laughs> with my rant and she said that the, the session was over. And I was like, well, huh? I thought there was gonna be some kind of advice here. And what she said to me was that she had no worries for me. And that was the end. And I was left to sort of reflect on that or ponder what had just happened. I'll never fully know what she meant, but like I can definitely imagine that I think I came to understand where she was coming from because I've experienced it since where you can see people struggling with something. You can see people who have a difficult situation or have their demons and what have you, but you also sense something else in them, which is something like a process or an underlying core. Maybe it's resilience or curiosity or vitality for life. And you can extrapolate and kind of map out that even without knowing the, the specifics of their trajectory, they have a trajectory. Their algorithm is good and self-preserving and life affirming. And the circumstances will get filtered through that and optimized to at least an acceptable level where they're growing. I've seen that quite often with, with people in my life. You know, I've seen friends have really difficult, terrible even circumstances, but like I see who they are. I see their core. I see their thirst and their hunger, their goodness, their desire to do well. Even if they like are depressed and hate themselves, in a sense, their love of themselves, their self-love. So like for me as an outsider, as an observer who feels like I truly see them, I'm not so worried about the specifics of their, their difficulties or their current fixations, because you know that those things are my compared to their core, their potential, what they already have, but like aren't fully aware of. That's how I feel when I look at Kilua talking about how he doesn't know what he wants to do. It's like, it's okay. You know, <laughs> he'll figure that out or he won't. And that's okay too, because inevitably he has a trajectory. He, he has this life affirming thing. He's awake for a kid. He's looking, he's thinking, he's engaging with reality and taking on difficult challenges and pushing himself and even like looking his own emotional difficulties dead in the face. The fact that he can articulate that he's jealous of Gon, but still love Gon. The fact that he can say, oh, I wish I had a mom like that, but still appreciate Mito and not be resentful. That thirst he has for adventure. In the big picture, Gon will also. They're on parallel paths. In the short term though, it's not even that clear to me that Gon having this very, very specific thing he's aiming for, which is his father, is better than Kalua not having anything, if that makes sense. Ultimately, it's all good because it's all like this destiny following thing, but it's possible there's a dip coming for Gon. There's a crash because there's a lot of energy being put into his father and we don't really know Know anything about his father except that he's like really powerful that he has a commanding presence and extreme capability we don't know anything about like his goodness right or his concern for Gon is he a friend or foe I don't know Gon might be like falling into this thing where he's chasing after this heroic figure that he's invented in his own mind only to realize that the heroic figure in his mind is the real hero and not his actual father there's so much possibility here so much being set up can't wait to see how it plays out for both of them